Hello, I am so excited about today's card. This is a stamp, this tree swing stamp. I absolutely fell in love with it when I saw it, and I love it even more now that I've been using it. What I'm doing here is I'm just taking this stamp and I'm going to ink it up with my ink pad. Now, ink pads, when it comes to these wooden stamps, you need to have an ink pad that is wet enough, but also not too wet because you don't want to over, over saturate the stamp. I'm going ahead and I'm putting a fair amount of ink on this because I really want a crisp image. And then what I'm going to do is because I'd like to put a little birdie on this swing, I'm going to mask off an area. This is just my technique. You can do masking in different ways. Some people like to put the mask down and then ink the stamp and then remove the mask to stamp. I like to put the ink down and then put the mask down. And I'm just using post-it tape here. And I'm just going to kind of put it in the section of this little swing that I don't want to have stamped. One of the things I will tell you about wooden stamps is that if you ink up your stamp and then before you go to stamp, you breathe warm, moist air over it. So when I say breathe, don't blow on the stamp because that will dry the ink, but just from your lungs, breathe out warm, moist air and then put your stamp down and hold it down fairly firmly, you will get a really nice image. That's one of the beauties of these wooden stamps is you can get some really clear and crisp images and it's a really satisfying feel when you get that look that you're looking for. And if you can tell, this is actually a really great image that, that has stamped for me. The next thing I need to do is put my little birdie on the swing. And this is from a Lawn Fawn stamp. By the way, all of the supplies will be in the description below. And I'm just going to stamp this little birdie and it already looks super cute. What I need to do now is connect the strings on the swing so that it looks like he is in mid-flight on this little swing. And what I'm using this with is a Copic Multiliner. And I use this quite a bit. I use this to finish off stamps, to clean up stamps, to finish up when I've done some masking. And the last thing I'd like to do here is just make his legs a little bit longer so it looks like he's actually standing on the swing. And you wouldn't really even be able to tell that this was not part of the original stamp to begin with. So super cute. I wanted to do a little bit of an edging on this, but I didn't want it to be anything that was colorful that would take away from the stamp. So I'm really just randomly squiggling around the outside of this with that Copic Multiliner. And I really like this as a look. There's no right or wrong. It's just a very simple way to edge things. And now I'm going in and I'm doing some simple Copic coloring. I'm not going into too much detail because the stamp itself is really pretty. I'm using some muted colors. I'm not going to go super colorful on this because I would like to go ahead and have the envelope and the card that I'm going to use be a little bit more colorful. So there is a, a, a muted tone to a lot of these. And I'm just going in very simply and coloring these out. Not too much in the way of detail, just sort of layering on a little bit of color. With these greens, I did want to have a little bit of contrast on the leaves, even though they're very small. So I did go in with a couple of different layers of colors, light to dark, dark to light, that kind of thing, to go in and add a little bit of a variation on the colors. But again, it's not a very complicated stamp. And then at the very bottom, I wanted to have a little bit of a grassy look to it that just sort of faded off into nothing. So I'm using the colors, the YG61 in concert with the colorless blender to kind of blend it out. And then I decided that I wanted a little bit more of a darker look near the base of the tree. So I'm blending that out. I wanted to add a sentiment to this and I really like that look on the flowing lines of this particular sentiment. I like the sort of handwritten look. So I'm going to use some VersaFine ink to stamp that sentiment so that it's really clear. And you can see I've actually got another stamp on the other side. I do that quite a bit. I use both sides, but there was another project I was in the middle of and I didn't want to remove my stamp from that side. So I just used the alternate side to do the stamping for this project. And again, I hold this down for quite a while to really get a good impression. 
one of the, the upsides to using a stamping tool is that you get a second chance to do something if for some reason you didn't get a good impression. With wooden stamps and with some of the stamp block usage, you don't get that. So you want to make sure that you get a good image to begin with. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do just some finishing touches to this. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to put this on a full-size card or, and maybe put a ribbon on the side of it or if I wanted to cut the card down. And that's what I'm doing here is sort of positioning it to see how it is that I would like it to look. And I decided I really didn't want a ribbon to distract the look of this. And as I was looking at it, I actually decided that I would like to put in a little bit of shadow. So I used the C1 and I did a little bit of shadows along with the colorless blender. And then I realized there were some actually some places that I missed. So I went in and finished it up. And now I'm adding some accents of just some white gel pen to just make it have a little bit more depth. Because I decided to cut the card down and to not put a ribbon on it, I wanted to have it have a little bit of dimension. So I'm using some craft foam to put underneath the card to give it that dimension, to have it pop a little bit from the base of the card. And as I said, this is a simple card, but so, so pretty and detailed. The last thing I decided to do was I decided that I wanted to have a matching envelope. And I wanted to use the stamp, but I didn't want the entire stamp to be on the front of the envelope. So I'm just using the side of the tree and I'm going to stamp it off to the side and add another sentiment to it just so that it ties it in with the particular card but that it doesn't overwhelm and it doesn't also give you that full peek at the stamp until you open the card. So I'm just going in and I'm stamping this on the envelope and then I'm going to go in and stamp the sentiment. And I really wasn't sure where I wanted to put this whether it was at the base of the tree or kind of in the curve of the tree, I sort of went with the curve of the tree. And then I thought I was done, but at the end of the day, when I got these together and I started to look at them, I wanted the tree on the envelope to have a little bit more color, so I did go back in with the same colors that I used on the tree and did that on the envelope, just very lightly. When you're covering an envelope, you have to be very light-handed. And that completes the card. It's very simple, but again, it's all about that super cute stamp that we started with. Speaking of which, that is our giveaway. In order to have a chance at this giveaway, you need to be a subscriber and leave a comment below. Thank you for joining me, and if you like what we do here at Dory Creative, be sure to hit the like button. If you would like to see more of what we do here, you might consider subscribing. Thank you, and remember, always be creative.